good evening, everyone, and welcome to our evening service here at Morgan Eden. I'd like to sing together a song called Be Good Father. And tonight we have a Be Good Father who loves each and every one of us and cares deeply about each and every one of us. He knows our struggles tonight. He cares about those struggles. And he cares about you. Join with me as we sing this song together.
Well, over the next uh, few Sunday nights, we're going to hear from some of our key workers from our own church here at Lurgan Elam. And as a church family, we just want to say a big thank you to them for the vital role that they play in our healthcare system. We are truly blessed in, in, in Lurgan Elam to have so many uh, key workers. And we just give God all the praise and all the glory for the gifts that they've bestowed upon these people. Amen. Hello everyone, I hope you're all good and you're all well and um, I hope you're all staying connected and texting, ringing each other, making sure we're all okay through this really strange time. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Ruth and I am 18. I part study, part work. Um, so I'm studying my A-levels at Arma Tech at the minute and I also work as a domestic in Grey Avenue Hospital. So part of being domestic is you clean obviously around the ward and then as well give out meals and tea and coffee to the patients um, and I love my job but recently it has changed a lot um, so just through different processes and um, there's, a, there's a process called Dawn and Dolphin um, that you now have to do at the bottom of the, the hospital before you go anywhere onto the ward so it includes wearing a mask and a visor um, and wearing your full PPE so that was a bit strange you know when the canteen's been moved outside but just uncertainty was 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 really 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 hard to get used to um but now that we've got everybody's got um a routine and a process um and everybody's you know working together it's working out well um so that's the main they're the main things that have changed and also you know the quiet the hospital's a lot quieter at the minute and um, which is really good and um, it's just a bit strange to adjust to because we're used to be used to being really really busy and really really rushed off our feet but it's good that everybody is healthy and well and at home where they should be. Um, so one of the pro one of the God's promises that has really, really kept me going through this time is just that he will never leave nor forsake me. And that's been really, really useful practically for me. So I'm a very practical thinker. And so going through, whenever I went into the hospital the first time, that whole dawn and dolphin process had changed. I was obviously taken back, everything was different, Every, everything looked different and I just thought right okay that's okay I'm not alone God's with me I imagined him beside me God's with me he's not gonna leave me he's gonna carry me through this no matter what happens and I just remember that in my head and then as I go through I get more confident in what I'm doing and I realize that God is with me and I can do this because I've got him with me so that's a really 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 good promise to have and um I've got one of these V tokens just to keep me keep me reminded. It says trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs three five. Somebody got me this for my birthday last year, and I've always loved it. But sticking it to my window and looking at it every day has really, really, really helped because I can trust in Him, and I can trust in Him because I know He's never, ever, ever going to fail me. And that's something that I really, really depend on. And He's always with me, and He's never, ever going to leave me. So if you find yourself in a really, really difficult or sticky situation or you find yourself taken back or in uncertain situation, just stop and pause and think, no, I'm okay because God is with me and he knows he's He's greater than what else, whatever we can imagine. And I thank God also in this time of the reminder that he's in control. And it's always, always been said and everybody always knows it. But when you think about it, I, I'm so thankful that God's in control and I'm not. Because although we, we like to be in control, when you think of this whole situation, like it would be going so much worse if I wasn't in control. Like I am so glad that God's in control because his ways are higher than our ways. And he has so much more knowledge that we can never even understand. So it makes so much more sense that he's in control. And it just really, really gives my heart peace that he's in control because I know he's never going to leave me nor forsake me. And he's the one that's in control. I'm just so thankful for that. So yeah. For this really, 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 really uncertain time where you're having to stay in your house and not see your friends and not see your family and not do all your normal routine things, just remember that God is with you and God is in control. Um, he's got the whole plan working out and he knows what's coming. So he knows what way to put you and where to put you and how to how to use you to, to help other people and just to really, really get you through this time. So yeah, just remember that God is with you and he's never ever going to leave you and he is in control. 
Hi, my name is Lauren. I am 24 years old and I am a staff nurse working within Lurgan Hospital, mostly looking after patients who have had a stroke. I have worked in Lurgan Hospital for my qualified about two and a half years ago. Due to the coronavirus, there's been many challenges that has faced us as nurses, healthcare workers and the NHS as a whole. Due to COVID-19 being a brand new virus, this brings a lot of unknown and uncertainty and we are learning as we go along. I am fully trusting in God to provide us with the knowledge and wisdom that we need to help our patients effectively. One of God, God's promises that has helped me get through this time is that knowing that God is the God of strength, that in my weakness he is our strength. Our difficulties of stress and uncertainty in this worrying time allow us to see God's strength displayed in our lives through every weakness and hard place. It brings us into a deeper dependency and humility on him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 9-10 till 10, it says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So in the unknown of the coronavirus and weakness of seeing patients unwell, all of us are working as key workers can know that God is the God of strength. Therefore, we can go through life circumstances knowing that we can rest on Christ's power, which has defeated the grave and can rejoice in this fact. Just to finish, I want to thank everyone for their prayers. For us key workers, please continue to pray for us. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Emma Jean. Um, I'm married to Johnny. We have four kids. Uh, I've just been asked to say a wee bit about myself, where I work and how things have changed um, for me and for us as a family. Um, over the last four weeks. Um, so we are a family of six. We normally have four kids that go out to school and they'll come home until one, between one and three. Um, so that changed very abruptly and we now have four kids that we homeschool, um, which is, yeah, it's, it's different and it's challenging, but it's fun at the same time. Um, the kids probably have adjusted very well to um, not being allowed to go out. We've been very blessed that we have space for them to play in and they're getting on really well. Maybe in the week two they were starting to get on each other's nerves but they've settled again and they are. They're really starting to form stronger relationships um, through it all. Um, us as a family, it's been, it's been lovely. Um, uh, I would nearly go as far to say that we're enjoying lockdown and um, one of the benefits of COVID-19 is that we are getting to spend more time together as a family and just yeah just strengthen those relationships there's no outside influences no running about uh, nothing to run them to you know it just makes life so much easier everything is kind of chilled out tea times are relaxed Bedtimes are relaxed, it's kind of a free-for-all, but um, yeah, we are going back to school now after a two-week break for Easter, so we may start some sort of routine again just for everybody's sanity. Um, but yeah, uh, we have, we've enjoyed, we have enjoyed this time and we really, really appreciated it. Um, on the other side of that then, I obviously work in the hospital and work night duty, so I work in neonatal, which is looking after the premature and sick baby. So it is, it's challenging and don't get me wrong, I love my job, but at the minute when I know that I have to go to work, I do get uptight that day, not knowing what you're going to go into, what you're going to be faced with. Um, and yes, we have all of our protective gear and our face masks and visors and all of that, but there's still that element of fear that you just don't know if on the way there, while you're there, on the way back, you're going to bring something home um, to my family or to our extended families, you know, if we're getting groceries or whatever for them. Um, in work itself, what I do hasn't changed at all. How I do it has changed. Um, the hospital as a whole is a very strange place. It's 
beyond recognisable at the minute. It's quiet. There's nobody in the corridors. Um, the car parks are empty. Um, so yeah, it's a very, very surreal experience walking through the hospital. Um, I have to say the biggest thing that I struggle with while in there is the changes that we've had to make to the unit and the family care that we give that the parents are so restricted um, in how they're allowed to come and interact with their babies now and um, which is really really hard you know to take being in the neonatal unit is a difficult difficult time at any time never mind given this and then being told on top of that you have a two-hour period that you can come and see your child and that is it and if you're unwell at all or anybody in your house is unwell you can't come at all and that's very difficult for parents to take you know as well when they've just been blessed with this newborn baby that maybe isn't doing so well and they're now being told you can't come in and um, so I have to say that's the biggest part of the struggle is just helping the parents through that um, and they understand that it's for their benefit it's for their baby's benefit it's for our staff and it's for our staff's families and um, but yeah I really if I had to pick one promise that is probably keeping me going through all of this is that God is in control and um, when I look around over this last four weeks that we have had the weather that we've had has been amazing and I think that is just one amazing blessing that has blessed probably everybody with families at home to make it a wee bit easier just to break into that transition that they've had time to go outside and the opportunity to go outside with the weather and slowing down has made everybody see spring actually come to life and see it and see that God's creation is still alive and it is still going on regardless of what is happening with COVID-19 and um, I think the biggest thing for me is that God is bigger than this and he is in control and as worrying and daunting as the whole thing may seem I have to believe that there is a greater good for this and whatever the reason is for it that God is going to use it for the greater good and for the benefit of his kingdom um so yeah God's promises is definitely that God is in control thank you God bless hello um I've been asked to share a wee bit with you about what it's like to work in the healthcare setting at this present time. Um, I'll tell you a bit about myself first. Um, my name is Tanya. I am married, my husband Stephen, and we have two sons, Matthew and Philip. Um, I'm a Christian, I attend Lurgan Elam Church and have been attending for the last 25 years when I moved over from England. Um, I'm a nurse, I work for the Southern Trust and my job title is Clinical Sister. Um, the area where I work is the day clinical centre and in the day clinical centre we administer blood transfusions and treatments for people and um, for all sorts of different conditions. Um, our patients would attend weekly or monthly or however often they're needed to and we have a close relationship with all our patients. We are quite a small team and again we're quite close-knit and have a good relationship between us. Um, so over the last few weeks there has been a lot of changes in the Southern Trust and we have had to move our department twice. The first time was to make an area for patients to be isolated if they were COVID-19 positive and the second move has been for our own patients' safety. We've moved them out of the main Craigavon Hospital building. So with all the changes that have happened, um, there has been a lot of positive things. Um, the hospital are working as a team. We are a very close-knit team as the hospital and the whole Southern Trust. And we've all banded together and are helping each other out. Um, these times are something we've never seen before. So there is a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety, but it also has brought us all close together and we're working together in whatever areas we're called to work. Um, although I work in the day clinical centre. Tomorrow when I go into work, I could be working in another area of the hospital. If we're called, we'll go. And there's been no complaints about that, which is lovely. Um, there's a 
a lot of prayer has gone up for us in the Southern Trust. There are Christians working in all different departments of the hospital from a high up and in every department really. And as decisions have been made, a lot of prayer has been put over these decisions. And I have to say the hospital is working well and is coping very well with the amount of patients who are coming in for treatments. Um, uh, the one thing I have found tough in my own area is the amount of anxiety and fear that the staff have um, in my team. And that's one area in which we, we do need to pray is for the fear and anxiety to leave. And even with all this fear and anxiety, they are given 100% to their work. But as you walk into the area, you can feel the and it's fear for a lot of them are saying just they don't want to bring this virus home to their families, which is understandable. So um, as a Christian, I believe God has placed me in this area for a reason, as he has placed all of us in our areas for a reason, whether we're isolating at home with our family or out working. Um, God has us here for a reason and we just have to trust him and we know that everything works for good to those who love the Lord. Um, I've been asked to just share a promise that has helped me over the last few weeks and the thing I feel I have needed has been courage. So the verse which has helped me in this and which I am carrying to work with me every day um, is Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 and it says be strong and courageous and do not be afraid and do not be discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go and I know 100% that the Lord my God is with me wherever I go. Thank you for listening. Well, good evening. And can I just say a big thanks to all of our healthcare workers and especially the ones out of our assembly. We thank God for you. We thank God for all that you're doing and the, the sacrifice, the love that has shown has been absolutely amazing. We do thank everybody who's out in the front line there, who's uh, keeping all of our uh, community systems going and services going and and shops and bins and um, everything. We don't want to miss out anybody. We just thank God for you all at this very, very difficult time. And as a church leadership, we're praying over you and we are praying over your families and your homes and we really do pray that you know God's um, hand upon you at this difficult time. This evening, I just want to spend a couple of minutes with you looking from John chapter 3 and God has really spoken to my heart about his demonstrated love and I think we really do need to hear about his demonstrated love this evening. So we're going to be reading from John chapter 3 from verses 16 through to 21 and just before we do that do you know this really this this the teaching that the Lord has put onto my heart for this evening to share his gospel about his demonstrated love. I'm thinking in the context of Northern Ireland and how for, for years, for decades, it has been shaped by aggressive politics with secular agendas and quite often with religious traditions and not always in good ways. But whenever we look into today and being part of a, a global community, a global village, if you like, in some ways, now we see this plight with coronavirus and Northern Ireland suffering too. Coronavirus has invaded our nation and it has brought a lot of fear, anxiety, worries, and rightly so in so many ways, and sickness and even death, terrible, terrible things. And also <clears throat> it has manifested itself in our communities in some very ugly ways. Whenever we've seen the scenes where people were going into the supermarkets and, and hoarding and grabbing and fighting over getting uh, groceries to look after themselves. But it hasn't only been that. It hasn't only been that because I see our nation too being embraced by this sacrificial love and kindness that has been given <coughs> excuse me, by so many. And we thank God for NHS. We thank God for our shopkeepers. And we thank God for uh, even people within our assembly who have given so much and uh, keep giving and keep blessing uh, people around them. The Lord bless you all. And do you know something for the Christian? The Christian should always be reaching out uh, with the love of Christ and with the message of Christ too, with the cross of Christ central. Uh, whenever we look to the cross, we see the demonstrated love 
of Christ, where Christ gave his life for us to save us from our sins. If we turn from our sins and trust him as Savior, he'll save us forever. Praise God, it's good to be saved. We're going to read about God's love tonight again. God loves this world. This world is in so much bother, but God loves this world. He loves this world, despite the rebellion of people, despite bad decisions, despite the, all the evils in the world. God loves the world. And I want you to hear that tonight. God loves you tonight. God loves you tonight. If God was reaching out into your heart tonight, reach out to God. Give your life to the Lord. Get saved. It's great to be saved. And know the love of God through the demonstration of love acts through God's people as well. It's a witness to this world. It really is. We're going to read. Uh, and as we read through this, I want you to see something that this world's already condemned. But Christ didn't come into this world to condemn the world because the world is already condemned in its sin. Christ came into this world in this world to save it from its sins. And this is a demonstrated love of God that he would give his son. So let's read together from John chapter 3 from verse 16. Look what it says. It, this is a famous verse. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come into the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his de deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Listen, you push God out, you're left with darkness. Dark, darkness represents evil, all those evil things. And there's, a, there's an enticement to do evil things, to do bad things. But in the end, it really does always show itself to be truly evil and damaging and destroying our world. You see, this was coronavirus. You push God out, you push God's protection and blessing and wisdom out. And Satan comes in, destroys causes havoc. He does nothing except to, to seek, kill and destroy. But Christ came to give life and life in abundance. Christ uh, demonstrated his love. God demonstrated his love by, show, uh, by sending Christ. Christ demonstrated his love by dying for us on Calvary's cross to bear away our sin, to bear away evil, to overcome evil, to destroy the power of sin and death and the devil over the believer's life so we can know hope with the Lord in glory. Now I want you to see God's heart toward lost people, toward this lost evil world. There's so many people accuse God of so many things but you have to go to the Bible and John chapter 3 16 if you want to truly know about God this is what it says for God so loved the world. It wasn't a world that was all fixed up and properly and in order and obeying God, quite the opposite. It was against God. It was dark. It was evil. Men were making bad decisions. And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave, the God I serve is a giver. He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And God gave love in Christ to a loveless world and God still gives his love in Christ but will you receive that love will you receive his love imagine that having to convince people to to, to receive the love of God can I encourage you tonight it's great to be saved oh but live in the love of God accept Jesus Christ as your savior for God so loved the world this word this word for for love is a sac self sacrificial Love. Christ chose the cross. Nobody forced him to the cross. He chose the cross and he went the whole way to the cross and died on that cross. Why? Because he loves you. And you know the thing that really gets my head about this? Christ done that for you and for me before we could even ask him to do that. He demonstrated his love toward us while we were still sinners. 
uh, Romans 5 verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the thing while you were at your worst. Christ died for you. This is not about you getting fixed up and trying to be the best version of who you are and putting on a performance before God. This is you confessing your sins before a holy God and crying out to him for salvation and knowing this, that God is love and he wants to fill your life with love. The love that's already been demonstrated, by the way. It's just not talk here. The action has been done on Calvary's cross and for the for the christian who will truly believe in christ as savior the love of christ the spirit brings the love of christ and the fruit of christ spills out of their lives let's look at galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 it says but the fruit of the spirit is love now that's the first one that's mentioned of the fruit of the spirit because the love fruit uh, is the determiner of all the other fruits that follow thereafter but God, oh sorry, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. These are beautiful, wonderful fruits of the Spirit. But it all starts with love. It's all caught up in love, and it's the love of God. It's the love of God that we're talking about here this evening. And you know, for us, I want you to see the God that we serve. Is he some big taskmaster who, who, who just fires down his commands? Well, where do you see the command that he tells us? I want, to see, I want you to see the, the first greatest command and the second one that follows. Jesus teaching his disciples, commanded them to love. That's the command. He didn't uh, command them to go out and criticize and get all uh, uh, agitated about who they were and who they should be. He says, love. As I've loved you, you love others. Let's read together. Mark 12 verses 30 and 31. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. My God in heaven, that's his command. Love him and love yourself in him. And then look what it says. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There are no other commandment greater than these oh can you see in a loveless world we have a god who loves us he loves us with a pure holy unending love he has demonstrated his love toward us whatever you on the cross through christ whenever you accept christ as savior he produces that love in your life then he commands you as i have loved you with this amazing grace go and love others with this amazing grace too I'm just so excited tonight because of the wonderful truth of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you trust him as saviour? Would you? You know, for me, whenever I get born again as a Christian, I have assurance of eternal salvation in heaven and I have a great commission upon this earth that for those who are hopeless, who are afraid, who feel lost, there is a saviour and he loves you and his name is Jesus. I, I just have had this quickened in my heart. Maybe you heard this as a child. And it says, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Can I tell you tonight, the Lord loves you. He loves you. And he loves you, but you've got to turn and lean into his love and accept Christ as Saviour. The Lord bless you tonight. Can I just say again, I just thank God for all our NHS workers and everybody who's out in the front line there. We're praying for you. We're thanking God for you. And we're praying for God's protection over your life. And we'll get through this together. Keep on going. And maybe you have a need tonight. Maybe you have a, a physical need tonight. Please contact us and we'll help you in any way that we can. But you know that the greatest need that can be met tonight is the need of salvation. Oh, that you would turn to the Lord. I know that he loves you and give your life to him. Give him everything. And you know something? For those who call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. The Lord bless you tonight. Let me just pray and we'll finish. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your precious word of truth. And I pray, Lord, as we have been listening, Lord, that your love, Lord, would fill up all, all of our hearts to overflowing for your glory. Lord, just be with us now as we finish in worship in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. For an author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered. tonight, Lord, and for what we have heard, Lord, from, from your servants, Lord. And Lord, we just bring all the frontline workers once again before you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for the, for the job that they're doing to, to help keep us safe, Lord. And, and Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you'll just continue to keep a hedge of protection around them, Lord, as they treat the sick uh, who are suffering from this, from this virus at this time. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, that you are the King of King and the Lord of Lords, and you are mighty to save tonight, Lord. So, Lord, I just pray that tonight you will just put a hedge of protection around your church, around your people, Lord, 
and keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen.